Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So it's been a hot minute since I've caught up with you guys. I've actually been filming a lot, but I just haven't been editing a lot. <laughs> um, and editing is like, I feel like I've grown more of a hatred to it over the years, but um, yeah, so hopefully I will start pushing videos out, but I have a feeling this one's gonna go up before the other ones just still because I get so many DMs about this specific video every single day. I just bit my tongue, great. So today's video is going to be my step two CK study plan. So unless you're a current third year student, step one is going to be pass fail for you. And that has led to the implication that step two CK is going to be the most important board exam. As far as if I think that's true, I think just based off of conversations I've had with faculty, etc., I definitely think that that is the case. I think that there is going to be more of an emphasis placed on step two CK than um, ever before. Granted, even for people who are in the cycle right now, like myself, who have a score for step one and step two, um, step two CK is still looked at. And so I feel like this will be helpful regardless of whatever pass fail system there comes to exist. Uh, for me and my personal goal for step two, uh, as many of you guys know, I wanna do dermatology, which is known to be one of the specialties where they're a little bit more high on the higher end of averages for step scores and grading, etc. And so it's definitely always been like looming over me throughout my entire years of medical school because I've known I wanted to do dermatology since I got in. Um, just like all of the stress of numbers has kind of continued on from being a pre-med to some extent um, so you know it was for my personal goal I did set a goal of just doing the best I could possibly do try to be a lot more organized for step 2 CK than I was for step 1 as far as giving you guys plans yeah so hopefully this video is helpful be sure to give it a like if you do find it helpful it helps me out a lot so for my step 2 uh, score I was aiming to get anything above a 255 that was my goal I wanted to improve from step 1 I feel like I've heard this from program directors um, from multiple different specialties not just dermatology but the one thing they really kind of especially when you had step one scores looked at was did you improve from step one to step two because the reality is step two is clinical knowledge it's real life stuff it's not about biochem it's not about random stuff it's about how you're going to actually help patients so if you improved that was great if you went down um, then that was a little bit more concerning. That was considered a red flag. So for me, my goal was definitely, I want to only move up. So for me, I felt like I had a lot writing on this exam because I wanted to do one better than I did on step one. And two, I wanted to kind of dispel any doubts that they would have because I didn't get honors in all my clerkships on third year. Like I needed to dispel any of those knowledge doubts so they could really like put that away and you know, think, okay, she's smart. Like we're not concerned about her ability to pass board exams and do well. And let's look at the rest of her application. Like that's what I wanted to do. I, I felt like if I hit 255, I would have been over the moon. I would be super happy. And that was like still like an expectation that was like not easy. You know what I mean? Like getting a 255 is not easy. Like I actually had advisors and mentors telling me that I should be trying to hit that score. So it was like a lot of pressure for me. Uh, and I'm very, very happy to say that your girl did that. Um, I actually ended up getting a 263 on step two. It was literally the reason why I started crying in that video was because I never, ever, 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 ever would have thought that I would have cracked 260, like, and let alone 263, not even 261. Like I was like, every point was like, how did you do that? Like, I'm so proud of you. And I try not to think about test scores too much and put too much weight on them. And I, I still don't really think about my step two score like all the time. It's definitely like something that's in the past now, but if I do think about it, I am very proud of myself. And um, yeah, and it's crazy. I never would have thought I would have gotten that score. I know there's people on YouTube who have gotten like 270s and stuff. Um, and when you get into medicine, like there's just so many smart minds out there. Like you're, like in taking the same test as them and you're like ranked on the same percentile so like to get like 90 plus percentile in like when you're in medicine is so different than getting like 90 percentiles in out of medicine like they're just very different playing fields so i don't know it's pretty mind-blowing to me uh some of you guys it might not be as impressive but for me and the standard i set for myself i was like 
very happy with it. So um, as far as now, let me get into kind of my plan. So the length of time I took to study was four weeks of dedicated time. And I still had one week prior to that where I was off and on vacation. And I was kind of just like passively doing questions in bed. So I total studied for like five weeks, I would say. And then, and then on top of that, guys, I had a whole year of clerkships prior to my um, my test. So I was doing UWorld throughout my clerkship. So, so my UWorld QBank for step two was almost entirely completed by the time I had ended my year three and was about to go into dedicated. It was almost in past. I think there were some questions that were you know, not done, um, maybe like 10, five, 10% of the QBank, uh, but I didn't bother to like go through them. I just restarted my QBank. Week one following the end of my clerkships, I was really in need of a mental break too. And so I had kind of just, you know, gone hiking with my family and stuff like that. But I would like just sit around and do like 20 questions, like get myself like starting to think step two style. Um, and I just finished family med, so that was kind of broad, but I wanted to just kind of do random questions now, not like specific questions. And so I was just hitting random, doing a block of 20, um, and just like in bed, not really sitting at a table. I think I started around 70, 75%, which is not bad. Um, but like I said, keep in mind, I did a whole year of clerkships before this. So I've already seen these questions like a couple months ago. So, um, 70, 75% wasn't bad. It was like comfortable of where I was starting at. Um, but I knew I wanted to like work my way up to like 80s, hopefully. Um, and I was hoping the, the curve would be faster for step two than step one is cause that's what I've been told and that's what people tell you. And so, yeah, I was kind of hoping like, okay, I'll start on like 70 to 75% on these questions. And then maybe the goal is to get to like 80s by like next week or something like that. And so step two, I was able to do three blocks of 40 a day. So 120 questions a day. It was brutal, I'm not gonna lie. I had in entirely long days of studying. I didn't have a break at like 5 p.m. Like I would take breaks after my like block, like for a little bit, like maybe like an hour. Um, but beyond that, like I would go from like nine to nine. Um, and then, yeah, I would like walk Starkey maybe after one block. Um, yeah so it was it was brutal to do three blocks a day but i knew that i wanted to rather get it done in fewer weeks than longer weeks um so i did three blocks of 40 each day timed um i started like i said around 70 75 there were definitely some uh blocks where i got 60s and even a couple blocks where i got 50s like there were moments where i was like holy shit like i'm getting worse like it always feels like that you feel like you're getting worse you're going downhill your percentages are getting lower it would have been better off just taking it in the beginning like that's definitely how i felt like around step one sometimes you could just skip the vignette go to the bottom and be like what's the pathology of this like what is this in the slide like you know what i mean but with step two it's not like that it's literally you have to le read the whole clinical vignette and you have to find a diagnosis and then whatever they want like nobody's going to tell you the diagnosis in step two really often um the whole point is you diagnose and then tell us the treatment or you diagnose tell us how you want to diagnose it so you have to read the vignettes and they're longer. They're not like, the timing was a little bit harsher is what I'm trying to say. So it wasn't, it was kind of stressful to do the blocks. Um, by, I did take the AMBOSS preliminary score predictor um, after my first week of passive studying. And I believe, I'll put the score up here. I believe about like a 252 or something like that. And it made me feel okay. It made me feel good. It definitely made me, it, I felt like it was a little nice to me to be honest, because my percentages were good. They uh, were definitely better than what I thought, but I thought still like, hmm, I don't think, I think they're definitely like overly nice to me. I looked it up too, and I think a lot of people feel like Amboss is a little nice to them when they give them the three digit number. So um, I felt good though. I felt like, okay, that's a good place to kind of like, got that score, started doing my three blocks of 40 every day, and um, kind of would beat myself up some days, feel good some days. And around week three, I started feeling really good. I started feeling like I'm getting 80s constantly. Sometimes I would even get an 87. And then one or two times, like rarely, I got like a 92. And I was just like, damn, like this is good. Like on new questions, I'm doing good. And it gave me like a little bit of relief but then sometimes your goal would get 50s too so step two was an emotional roller coasters which is why i had no idea which way my score would go so following that uh, once i finished uworld i would also supplement it with 
Anki decks, so on weak topics only. So I had an Anki, I'm not an Anki person, so I don't know all your Anki lingo, but sometimes during clerkships especially, I downloaded Anki because I had a lot of downtime sometimes waiting for a delivery, but not enough downtime to where I could do UWorld, but enough downtime where I could go through flashcards. So I downloaded like the Zanky deck, um, a list on the screen what decks I'm talking about, um, but they're like clerkship kind of dedicated decks. And the reason I liked them was because if I was really weak on a subject, like say I wasn't too great with like risk factors for like placental uh, pathologies, right? I could go to Gyne, I could go and narrow that down and I could go through the risk factors for all of them. Or if I felt like I was weak on like, I don't know, milestones, like child milestones, I would go and pull up the Anki deck for that and click through child like childhood milestones and be like, okay, what happens at three months? When can they write whatever? When can they draw a square? When can they whatever? Like that was stuff that I would use the Anki decks for, but I definitely did not put pressure on myself to like go through a certain amount of cards a day. I definitely didn't put my pressure on myself to like get through Anki. Like it wasn't a thing. It was more for, so when I felt like I needed spaced repetition or like flashcard type, memorization uh, tools, I would go to Anki. And that was really, really helpful. I have to say that flashcards are great for stuff like that, like things that are purely memorization. And um, I really enjoyed it for that. I would recommend it because UWorld's gonna show you maybe a couple of childhood development questions and you just want them to like start coming to you like this. And the best way to do that is fun. The only QBank I used was UWorld. Um, I did not use, I used Amboss for their library. That was the only textbook I really used. There was one textbook that I kind of sometimes maybe used. Um, I'll put it up on the screen here. Um, Herman had it. I wouldn't recommend buying it. I really don't think it's that great. I only, but honestly, I could count on my hands how much I opened that book. I really didn't open that book. So my main resources resource for looking up stuff though was at Amboss Library. I highly recommend if you're studying for step two, get Amboss for the library. Like I know it's expensive, but God, it is so worth it for that whole year of clerkships. First step two, like if you're in year three, I highly recommend Amboss for their library. It is just beautiful. And I've actually, before I started studying for step two, I watched other people's videos on how they studied for step two. And a lot of people recommend Amboss for step two. And I totally understand why. It's like so clinically, like it just gives you everything you need. Like for every condition, you get an overview, you get risk factors, etiology, you get diagnostic tools, you get therapy, you get contraindications, you get what do you do if they're allergic to something. Like it is beautiful. So for practice tests, I just didn't want to start too early, but I also didn't want to start too late. Three NBMEs, and then I took one of the free NBME 150 or like the the, the free questions NBME provides, I did that as well. Um, and then I did my two Sims. So in the total, I guess I had like five slash six, if you wanna count the NBME one, um, kind of simulations and none of them guys was as high as my actual score. So you world Sims have a reputation of being easier than NBMEs, but that's for step one. I felt like for step two, UWorld Sims were harder than NBMEs that I did. And that's because of also the vignettes were crazy long on UWorld and they were pretty short on um, NBME. Felt definitely really, really discouraged after my UWorld Sim one. Um, not because of the score at all. Honestly, again, I thought the score was generous for how bad I did. Guys, I did so bad on UWorld Sim one. You're probably like beneath 240s, you're tripping balls. It wasn't about this. Like, I honestly thought they were being nice to me with that three digit score. My raw percentages were so ass. I got like 50% on one of them and like, it was really bad. Um, so I felt ass after my U world sim one like eight days before my exam and i was just like shit like this is awful i started that's when i started doing three sets a day and even in my damn spare time i would start doing like questions just 10 question block doing random cards that i didn't need to do um i was i would watch ome in my free time like if i was like working out or if i was walking starkey i would listen to online med ed and i would just listen to, and i would fall asleep to online med ed like i was consumed in step two material for that like last 10 days because after that sim one man i was done like i was like shit can't get a fifth of getting like around 80s 85s even 87s on my u world block so i was like how the hell is this how gonna drop to a 50 like what the hell and like so i was like get your shit together you are clearly capable you have the knowledge like i would hype myself up like i know this shit like i was a walking encyclopedia at this point i was like you know this shit like you need to get better at test taking you need to like have confidence in your answers you need to think through your answers like it was literally just a mind shift guys like 
I wouldn't even say not much change other than me telling myself I know this shit. Like, then I went and did my NBMEs. So NBME 7, 8, I'll put the scores up on the screen. Um, I felt okay about my NBMEs. I think my raw percentage is actually pretty good, better than my UWorld Sims, but the three digit number they give is kind of mean sometimes. And cause my raw percentages were actually pretty lit for my NBMEs, which gave me a lot of confidence. Um, and then I did the NBME free 150 or whatever it is. And I did terrible on that shit. Like I did like, awful on that one um and so i felt like shit again and then i ended with you world sim 2 where i did okay and then i was like okay i did good i'm gonna just take this exam try my best and i'm ready like i can't know any more knowledge than i know right now it's all about confidence on my day of it's all about luck i can't know more than what i know now and like um they were both lower than what i got on my sims for step one which wasn't really re reassuring because again i wanted to perform better than step one um so they were actually lower scores than what i got on my sims for step one and i was just like maybe i don't know like i just can't study more though so i was like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna take it day of i was all about focus i was like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna be confident i took everything super strategically um i i really test took on this exam i think that's what i can give you guys the biggest piece of advice i could give you guys is this exam and including step one is test mother freaking taking like that is what it comes down to there were plenty where i was just like i don't know what the freaking hell this is like i don't know what drug that is i've never heard of it in my life like that's like a third line drug like i don't know and I just sat there and tried to reason through it. And like, I was very methodical on this exam back to, took me back to Berkeley where I just like put all my damn energy into being the, um, as far as our actual test day, I did take every single break. Um, I didn't ever press continue. I, ne I knew my mental needed that break. I think on step one, there was one block where I didn't take a break, but I, I told myself you're gonna take every single break. I had a lot of anxiety during my whole study period. I had really bad globus sensation uh, when I would do practice tests. I would get really nervous. It was ridiculous. Like my anxiety was out the roof. I was literally contemplating like, God damn, do I need like melatonin to sleep? Like this is awful. I just felt like I had so much on my shoulders behind this exam for derm. I was so ridiculous. Like I didn't even feel like I put that on myself. I feel like my everyone around me put that on me. Like not like my family, but like all my like, I don't know like everyone in the medical community like just kind of like told me that i needed to get these scores and i was just feeling like shit. i was just like damn like this is crazy like i need to get a crazy score and um but yeah i i don't think you have to go through a billion resources and cubings for this test i think it really is just a base knowledge and then test taking and i think that's what i focus on I told myself this and I did prep myself that if I didn't get the score I wanted, it was totally okay. Like it's not the end of the world. I was still gonna go for Durham. I told myself like, that's what I wanna do. I will channel every damn cell in my body to do what I want in life and no score, no three digit number is gonna stop me. And I think that's the mentality to have. Like I didn't, I, I realized I was placing too much self worth in this stupid three digit number too. Like I got, felt like I, I, the way I would get so disappointed with a bad score was just like, what is that saying about how much like weight I'm putting in this dumb score? Like, this is so stupid. So if you don't get the score you want, take your moment, have your moment, have definitely just like your time you need, but it's not what defines you. It's not gonna stop you from doing what you wanna do. Don't beat yourself up about the score. It's just a stupid score that you will not remember and I won't even remember mine even if it was good a couple years from now like honest yeah leave some comments and questions down below i'll try my best to answer as many as i can love you guys so much and see you in my next one